All right, we're joined now by Spencer Dinwiddie. Good to have Good you with on. us here on Yes. Let's talk about this season coming up. This is your second go-round with the Nets. You came over in the trade last year. What are you seeing from some of your new teammates? Um, I mean, I think uh, everybody's here early. I think everybody's in shape, ready to go. So we should have a fast start. I think um, they're going to continue to see improvement from Mikhail and Cam. Obviously, uh, you know, I've, I've spoken about Nick all the time. I think Ben's going to, you know, lead this group, and, and we have a chance to do some uh, some good things. Yeah, first of all, don't get a haircut. Your hair looks great, number one. <laughs> number two, you know, we were just talking about Ben Simmons, and I was saying, you know, forget about the three-point shooting. He just has to be aggressive going to the basket. Giannis yeah. will go up and down from the free throw line, but yeah. he continues to attack. Yeah. Don't you think, Ben, it's the same thing? He's got to be willing to get to the basket, draw the contact, and get to and go to the free throw line. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, to a certain degree, this is Ben's team. Um, along with Mikhail, obviously, I think uh, we go as far as he goes. I think if, you know, he's aggressive and making plays, we have a chance to be good. Have you seen the flashes of that so far when in Ben in practice? Oh, uh, of course. I mean, I, I think it's there. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I mean, health permitting, God willing, I think uh, you know, he's going to have a great city. Uh, see, ah season you've been such a, a terrific player for this organization we interviewed you in las vegas in july mm -hmm. and there was some talk oh maybe you wouldn't be back what, what did you think there was a chance that you were going to be traded or did you expect to be back here at the start of training camp no, i mean it's the nba you know what i'm saying i i know it's like uh in, in, in my situation when you're in that kind of like tier two sub all-star kind of category like you get traded for max players that's the way it works so uh you know with the guys that want movement um this season you know, I knew that I'd, I'd be in uh, potential talks to be moved, so it's just part of the game. No, I've been in it 10 years. So what does it mean now that you are back, though, that you're sort of, or is that a comfort zone then, knowing that, that you're here? Oh, for sure. I mean, I think, uh, you know, like I said, when I got traded back here, this is this is my home, um, my basketball home at least. Um, so, so it's nice to know that I'll be here. Spencer, you, your confidence is always sky high. Yeah. Late in the games, you're the guy, you're willing to take the big shot, which, yeah. which says a lot. And you're going to be that guy. How important, though, for Mikkel Bridges taking a next step, for him to become that guy as well that's going to want the ball late in the game and is going to want to make a play? Yeah, I mean, given that I think it's been in Mikkel's team, I think, uh, you know, since Ben's not a three-level scorer and Mikkel is, then Mikkel should be the one uh, taking the last shots. Um, and I hope that, you know, he's ready and prepared for that. I'm, I'm assuming that he is. I, I, I think uh, all the growth we've seen in practice and, and everything that we've seen him do, uh, you know, over at USA probably bodes well for that. But you want to be on the floor just just in case, um, right? I mean, <laughs> I, I, I know what I've done in this league, so, you know, it's, it's, it's all good. Yeah. Now, being a Colorado guy, yeah. and I'm trying to – I will ask two things. The Nuggets winning the championship, but also <laughs> a bigger story would be Deion Sanders coaching at Colorado. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, for sure. Um, you know, I got a couple friends on the Nuggets, so happy for them, uh, definitely. But uh, primetime in Boulder is different, man. It's a different <laughs> energy there. Um, it, it's super fun to be a part of. Um, I mean, I'm just – you, you get Have you so been to a game yet? Oh, I've been to two. <laughs> I, mean, I, was just, I was just there this past weekend when they played USC. Um, oh. You know, had had a little family rivalry, you know what I'm saying, because a lot of my, my family went to USC. So just overall, it's it's a lot of fun. It's it's fun to have that experience and, and, and be in that national conversation and, and have a optimism surrounding the program. Well, I have to tell you, I went to USC. I watched that game because I watched. 41 points and 546 yards get rung up on the Trojans D. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that Colorado team. We got a chance. Yeah. We got a chance to be pretty good. And I think, um, you know, in a couple years as he continues to get recruits in, you know, next year and probably the year after as well, you know, I think uh, we have a we have a big chance to do, uh, be great. Now, he did say, get me now because I could get me, be able to get me later. How long do you think he'll be there? Well, Te look. Teams are going to come after him. 1,000%. That, that's why I, I said the two years. I mean, I'd love to lock him up long term. I mean, whether it happens or not, I'm not the one signing the check, so I don't know. Um, but but we at least have him, I'm assuming, for one more year. I don't think he'd bail on Shador if Shador doesn't uh, go to the draft. So, you know, I, hopefully hopefully we capitalize on next year and, and lock him up long term. So you could help recruit to Colorado or, or the players in Brooklyn <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the Nets. And, All the time. And what, what, what would be your sales pitch about where this team is at right now? Right now? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, like I said, again, uh, as far as Ben takes us to where we're going to go, he's back in uh, all-star form. Uh, we got a big-time dynamic uh, point guard. We got Mikhail, who's only, what, like 20, 27, right? Um, you know, it was hopefully to be a first-time all-star. We got Nick, who is in a deep uh, DPOY conversation um, at, at, what, 24, right? Um, 
you know, so I, I think uh, with those three being big time pillars, and then you also just signed Cia, who's uh, perennially one of the best three point shooters in the league. Uh, everybody in that. 25 to 28 kind of range. I think, you know, you're right on that brink of that, you know, getting ready to try to win a championship type of uh, 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 age range, because usually that's around like 30, 32, right? Um, so, you know, probably a, a piece or two away, and, and, and that should be the sales pitch for anybody. Is it hard not to look back to a few years ago when you got hurt? If you had stayed healthy, and then, of course, Kyrie got hurt in the playoffs and James Harden. Yeah. Is it hard not to think that that was the team that was going to win? Because it did feel like you guys were the best team yeah. the year that Milwaukee won the title. Yeah, I mean, I think probably runaway favorites. But, you know, that's part of this game. Uh, luck is a part of it. You know, not getting hurt is a part of it. You know, and um, those guys are phenomenal players. Uh, they put in a ton of work into their game. Uh, and that's how they got to be phenomenal players. But sometimes, I mean, injuries happen and it's just not in the cards. You talk about trades and things like that. It, it's amazing how fast things change in the league, right? Especially around the trade deadline yeah. when you had a good thing going where you were at, and all of a sudden you're somewhere else, and these superstars are somewhere else, and almost rebuilding an entire new team here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, it's always interesting. But but all you can do is try to, you know, leave a team better, uh, uh, you know, f or make sure they're better for when you left it or whatever the when saying you goes. Yeah. When you got there, exactly. So, you know, um, I think in every spot, uh, that's something that I've done. Um, whatever circumstance I've been, I've been put in, uh, try the best to help the team win. And, you know, for the most part, I think while I'm there, they, they typically play better. Speaking about teams that may have gotten better, what did you make of the moves? Drew Holiday to Boston, and then five days earlier, it was Dame Lillard leaving Portland, getting traded to the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, they're both going to be tough. Um, I like Boston. Andrew's my friend, so I like Boston. <laughs> and w w why? Because did you feel they needed to replace the defense that they lost by trading Marcus Smart? Um, yeah, definitely that part. But but in general, I just think if you look across uh, their, their top six, like that's a pretty pretty big time top six, right? Like whether you decide to go big or you go small in the starting lineup, you're still going to have either uh, D. White, who's Colorado Buffalo, or or Horford off the bench, um, who are big time players, obviously, as we saw in the playoffs. And then, uh, you know, rotations only go to about eight, nine. So that means you only need two, three more guys. And, and they do have uh, Peyton Pritchard there, who uh, I think is a good quality young dude who can provide some extra ball handling. So you're probably looking at like two pieces that you may be missing. And they still got to Jace Tatum is going to be an MVP conversation, and Jalen Brown, who obviously just signed the big, biggest contract in history. So you talk about teams that are going to be at the top of the Eastern Conference. Frank mentioned this earlier, that teams don't want to be in that playing area. They want to be six or mm -hmm. above. Are those conversations you guys have, or is that just so far down the yeah, road? Yeah, I think it's a little bit far down the road, yeah. um, but I don't think anybody wants to be in the playing. And obviously, uh, we don't own our picks, so we're not going to be tanking. Um, and I think we have too much talent here to, uh, to tank. So, you know, I, I definitely expect us to, you know, try to avoid that plan for sure. So, you know, you got a big personality. So when you're done playing, not, not like you're going to need to work because you got <laughs> more money than God. But what is it going to be? Is it going to be media for you? Or could you maybe see yourself getting into some type of basketball role with coaching or front office? Nah, What's man. it going to be for you? No, nah, man, I'm going to walk off into the sunset. Uh, that's what they all say. <laughs> then they realize how much money you can make. Uh, it may, it, if I did do something, it'd be media. I, I, ain't, I ain't getting into the uh, front office side. I ain't got no interest in that. Well, maybe the sunset just takes you somewhere for a little while. There you go. Where hey, does that sunset lead, I, I by might, the way? I might hibernate for a year <laughs> and go to, like, Greece or something for another year. Then maybe I'll do media after that. Maybe two years in the media. Are you fluent in Greek? Oh, no, not at all. Will you be? Possibly. <laughs> I'll have the time. Yeah. I'll have the time.